Hey, 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 scrappy people. Tracy Reed here today with a quick tutorial on how I set up print sheets in Photoshop for mixed media from the digital kit. Today I'm working with the brand new Smitten digital collection that has a lot of really great mixed media in the digital kit and some fun like sequins and things like that that I really wanted to print for my hybrid pages. Uh, the best way to do that is to either print on clear sticker paper or to print on vellum sticker paper which is semi-transparent. The problem is is that there's a lot of white in the mixed media for the um, Smitten collection so I need to change those colors and I also need to add a border to these um, pieces so that when they go through my silhouette machine my silhouette doesn't cut every single little stamp cut out but rather um, just cuts around the outside edge. So what I'm doing right here is I just created a um, 5 by 8.25 little rectangle just so that I can compare the size of this mixed media to the size of that I scrapbook. So this is one half of a spread that I scrapbook so I'm just going to duplicate it and have two two sizes or two pages so that I can just make sure that everything that I print and cut is the appropriate size for my page. So I'm just kind of making myself a template. I will eventually delete it. I'm going to rotate this whole thing clockwise because I think in uh, vertical pages, not horizontal pages. So I'm just going to rotate everything. And then I'm going to resize everything. And I think I end up resizing it down, all of it down to like 75% about. Um, and then yeah, you can see I'm just arranging and making sure that everything is going to fit on a single page if that's what I want to use it for. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and start recoloring things and adding in strokes. All right, now that I've got everything sized appropriately, I can delete those guides and I'm going to delete the background too so that I can see everything. I'm also going to rotate it back uh, the other way again because it's that's the direction it's going to print in. And since I make stickers uh, that will go through the silhouette, I know I kind of know where everything needs to go. I'm not going to make it perfect because I can also adjust it in the silhouette software, but I'm going to make sure that it stays within the guidelines of where silhouette will print and cut. So I'm going to add a stroke to this one. I'm going to add black at first. It needs to be white, but I'm going to add black just so that I can see it because obviously the um, heart itself is white. I'm going to do a 25 point stroke or 25 pixel stroke on everything and that'll give me a good sticker border. What happens when you take it into the silhouette software is that when you drop a PNG in there, it just basically creates guidelines around where all where there's no negative space so everywhere that there's negative space or transparency um, it's not going to create a cut line but everywhere where that transparency ends it's going to create a cut line so these strokes even though they're going to be white um, they are going to create basically the cut lines for silhouette to follow now you can also do this in the silhouette software but um, I find it easier to do it in Photoshop, but in Silhouette, you would just open all these up just as they are. You would drag and drop them into Silhouette, and then you would do offset um, stroke for it or offset cut lines. So here you can see I am recoloring this to pink because uh, white will not print through your printer unless you have a really amazing printer that does stuff like that, but most... Uh, home printers do not. So white is not going to print through your printer. So I had to change the white hearts to pink and that's fine. Um, it's a nice light pink too. So it's actually going to read like white-ish when it prints. It's still going to be pink, but it's not going to be super uh, dark because of the way that transparent stickers work. They don't get a lot of color saturation in the stickers themselves because they're transparent and then whatever you put them over the top of they're going to interact with that color too. So unless it's white itself then um, you're going to get some color interaction there. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking a brush and I am filling in all of the spots on a separate layer that there were holes in this stamp. So the 25 point stroke didn't fill up all of the holes in between all of the hearts. So I'm just brushing in some white and then I merge the two layers to create one sticker. 
I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of these stickers. I'm going to add a stroke, clean up any stray pixels that happen to be there because mixed media is messy. And um, I'll just slowly, you know, turn off all of the layers as I've got them settled so that I can just focus on one layer at a time. And then I need to also recolor a few more of these. And in some cases, like the hearts on the left hand side, I'm just going to duplicate that layer three or four times so that the color gets more vibrant and intense and there's more of it so that when it goes through the printer it will still look stampy but it will have more pigment to work with on these transparent stickers so i'm going to go ahead and do that or i'm going to add a stroke here and i duplicated this layer as well the same and you can see how much more pigment there is on it now so I'm going to add my stroke in. I'm going to delete the extra pixels that I just, you know, I don't need to cut out. Anything that's not connected, I certainly don't need to cut out. And because I am erasing pixels that are on the sticker layer, they're going to erase that stroke too, instead of me having to go in and erase all of that white. When I erase the pink or the red or the pink or whatever, it's going to erase that stroke around it, the pixels that are no longer there. So I'm going through and I'm filling in the holes here too. It looks scary, but this is a separate layer. So I'm just gonna move the layer to the back when I'm done filling in the holes. And then I'll merge the two together to create one sticker. So I'm just gonna erase some of this extra stuff that's just not really gonna read well um, as a sticker. Now, another trick I have to make sure that everything prints well is for these sequins. So they're on the fairly light side, and again, there's just not a lot of pigment pigment for my printer to pick up on clear sticker paper. So I'm just going to add a levels slider, and I'm just going to move them darker so that when they are printed, there is more pigment for the printer to work with, and they will show up better as a sticker. Now, you're not going to have to do this kind of stuff for every... Um, embellishment in every digital collection ever. Smitten just happens to have a lot of light colors in it, a lot, a lot of light pink and blue and green, or not green, um, whites. So I'm having to do that here. Now here's an example of a sticker that, or a mixed media that will not translate into a sticker very well. And I'm not talking about the hearts, I'm talking about the ink splatter above the hearts. Because um, first of all, when I add the stroke to it, which you will see here in a second, after I finish these hearts, <laughs> I'm just gonna fill in the blanks here. There's just little tiny holes that the silhouette will try to uh, cut out individually and that will be annoying. So I'm filling those in with a white paintbrush, merge the two levels together or merge the two layers together. Maybe, oh, I'm erasing a few stray pixels here and there too. Okay, so now I'm going to merge these two layers together and move on. So this is just an example of something that will not cut well. I'm going to add my stroke and you can just see how scattered everything is. It's just not going to make a good sticker without a huge white border, which ends up being clear sticker paper. So I just decided to delete it. If I want to add ink splatters to my page, I can do that with actual ink. <laughs> this last thing I need to do is change the color of the white paint on this border, which is actually the most challenging thing I did here because I used white paint to create this border. And then the stripe has um, a really light blue in it. And my computer was like, no, 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 those are the same color. So when I tried to select just the white, it also grabbed the blue too. So and a, the way to fix that um, is I'm going to go in and change my um, tolerance for my tool up in the top toolbar here. I'm going to change it from 32, which is the standard, to 10, and that means it will be less tolerant of colors that aren't quite the right color, but are adjacent to the color. So now that it's less tolerant, it's not picking up that blue. And I'm going to add a little bit of color just to the white, because again, my printer is not going to print the white. So I'm going to add, or I'm going to make it blue instead. It can't be that bright blue because it's just not pigmented enough, so it's going to have to be a blue that matches the stripe, which is fine. Um, it's a little bit different of a look than what I was going to, what I designed it to look like, but sometimes you have to make concessions for uh, how things print <laughs> versus how they look on the screen. So I'm going to select the blue here that was in the border that's now hidden 
and I'm just deleting just because there is a bit of a color difference and you can see that here. All right, so this is ready for its stroke, which I will remember that I forgot to add when I get it or before I take it into the Silhouette software. So now that everything is done and color changed, I can merge this together after I make sure that I like it. Changing it to pink, maybe? No, I don't think that's gonna work. Maybe a different pink. It's so indecisive. <laughs> I do like the pink, but I think maybe the blue might work better. Okay, so I'm gonna start turning layers back on and I'm just gonna loosely arrange the all of the other mixed media on this page so that like nothing is touching so that I can um, open it up in the Silhouette software and rearrange it there. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So here we are in Silhouette. I've got it open, so I'm going to center it on the page and add in my cut marks, so or my print and cut marks, so that uh, I can print it and then the Silhouette will read the cut marks. Then I'm just gonna right click and release Compound Path, which will make everything an individual embellishment again. And I'm gonna spend a lot of time in here rearranging things. And we're gonna go super fast through that visual because I'd spent a lot of time rearranging things because I don't like wasting paper. And you can see I couldn't fit this heart on um, the canvas with the rest of it, which gave me a whole nother sheet of sticker paper and sticker paper, clear sticker paper is pretty expensive. So I don't wanna waste any of the clear sticker paper. So I'm gonna duplicate the sequins and this heart strip. And then I'm going to um, add in some stickers from the sticker sheet that I think will um, look good as clear stickers as well. So let's go full speed ahead while I do that. What I'm looking for is things that aren't necessarily like going to need to be written on, things that, I, as I say that, as I add labels, I was thinking of the labels as like mixed media pieces, but things that will sort of be good on backgrounds rather than in the foreground, um, things that I could just make um, images with like patterns in the background, or you know big titles that will have enough impact that large so i'm just arranging things trying to take up as much room as possible so as not to waste any of this sticker paper and then we're going to just go through the print and cut uh, motions like we would on anything else set for clear sticker paper except my clear sticker paper settings always still cut through the backing i don't know why now again, I'm being super nitpicky because I hate wasting paper, which is why I design my stickers the way I do on those sticker sheets that are very, like they take up the best amount of paper. Uh, so I'm just making sure I'm taking up every square inch, but I'm going to go ahead and print these and show them to you in real life. Then I will send them through my silhouette and there will be a couple still images at the end of what the individual clear stickers look like. All right, so here is what the sticker sheets look like before I have print and cut them. Of course, I will just stick this through my Silhouette machine just like I would any other um, sticker paper or card stock and it will cut out those lines that I defined with the strokes in Photoshop. You can also do that in um, Silhouette itself if you, have, if you don't have Photoshop and you just do it with the offset path function but these are all ready to be print and are all ready to be cut now that they are printed and I'm going to go do that.